seems like every single week there's a new electric car launched. It's unsurprising really because electric cars are incredibly popular at the moment. But it seems like with every single new electric car launched, each one is trying to outdo the other. The bigger car, a bigger battery, more fancy interiors. Very few car makers have actually launched something that offers a huge amount of value for money and a lot of good sense. That is apart from MG. The car was called the MG5 and pretty much in an instant, it really changed the electric car market. It became the first electric estate car you could buy. It offered a lot of interior practicality, a decent range, and it was good value for money to buy. This is the new updated model, and I'm going to find out whether all of those appealing characteristics of the car have remained, or whether MG have spoilt the recipe. Now, if you like new car content, please do consider subscribing to my channel. Click the bell icon so you're notified every single time I've uploaded a video. And if you've got any questions about this car, please do drop a question in the comments box below. Let's start with what's changed on the outside. Well, there's a totally new front end, which is a lot more angular than the old model, which to me resembled an old Volkswagen Passat. The rear lights are new, the colours are new, and so are the wheels. But generally speaking, it's still a bit of an awkward design. To me, the wheels look too small, and the attention to detail is a bit lacking. Here, for instance, look how close the num plate is to the badge. But style isn't the MG5's raison d'etre. Rather, it focuses on offering the most amount of bang for the least amount of buck. It's in here, though, where the changes are the most profound, because MG has ripped out the old car's pretty dated and cheap feeling interior for something that is far, far nicer. Firstly, the design. Um, it looks a lot more modern. Of course, you've got a uh, touchscreen, as is the way these days, plonked in the centre of the dashboard. We've got a digital driver's display, seven inches in size. There's a really nice use of materials in here. This is quite a nice texture on the uh, running across the centre of the dashboard. We've got this sort of metal look plastic that's on the centre console and running across the top of the dash. Uh, we've got these little blue accents dotted around and it just feels really nicely put together in here. MG has changed the spec as well. There's just two versions, the SE and the Trophy. This is the Trophy, but even the SE comes with a huge amount of standard equipment. You get that 10.25 inch screen, the infotainment screen, you get your seven inch digital driver's display. You get a new smartphone app to allow you to control a lot of the car's functions from your smartphone. Um, there's Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and importantly, there's the MG Pilot safety pack, which importantly now includes automatic emergency braking. The previous MG5 didn't have that. This top spec trophy, which only costs a little bit more than the entry level SE, adds uh, different style alloy wheels, you get privacy glass, get automatic air conditioning, and you get a 360 degree parking camera, and you also get these fake leather seats, which actually feel like leather. It doesn't feel like vinyl. It's actually a really good imitation leather. We do have to talk about this touch screen though. Now it's of a nice size, it's nicely positioned. Um, now it's MG's own operating system and it, it is fine. You've got all the options there. It looks a bit plain. It's nothing too fancy going on here. It works absolutely fine. I mean, it's not the most responsive system, but it gets there in the end. Um, but the thing I don't like about it is some of the icons are a little bit small. This trophy model gets heated seats as standard and the button to operate them is absolutely tiny, which I mean, it's small when you're just sitting here operating, when you're actually driving along you really do have to take your eyes off the road to actually operate it. But that aside, it's pretty good. And for the money, this interior is well made. It's got plenty of space, loads of cubbies dotted around, and you get a lot of functionality and tech as well. As this model is a facelift, practicality remains the same as before. So there's room enough for a couple of six-footers in the back, and the flat floor is useful. Although, it must be said, the floor is a bit high, which means your legs are a bit high. 
but there's still a decent 464 litre boot, fold down the rear seats and that expands to 1456 litres. Safe to say there's more than enough space. If you're an old fart who remembers MG sports cars from the 60s and 70s, or you're a weirdo like me who has an MG from the early 2000s, then the current crop of MGs will disappoint because they are not fun to drive. These new MGs, they don't focus on thrilling dynamics, they focus on value for money. So you've got to sort of get that into your head before you get behind the wheel because if you get into this thinking you're going to have the time of your life then you really are going to be disappointed but if you don't think like that there is much to like in here this is a facelift so mg haven't changed the mechanical setup whatsoever this new mg5 only comes with the larger battery now the longer range so you get a 61 kilowatt hour battery which is 57 kilowatt hours usable, and it should give you a claimed range of 250 miles. We're filming this um, early February. The temperature is 10 degrees, and I charged this overnight, and I was getting a readout of 211 miles. Of course, that doesn't really mean anything. What's the efficiency? Well, I've been getting between 3 and 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour, which is pretty good, actually. So we've established that uh, this is not a fun car to drive. What it is, is very comfortable. Now, the ride comfort, it's quite softly sprung. And because this is the trophy model, you now get 17-inch alloy wheels. The ride is a touch firmer than it was on the old MG5, which had 16-inch alloy wheels. But honestly, you'd have to be driving these cars back to back to notice that it's negligible. This is a quite a softly sprung car, and it goes down the road in a nice, relaxed fashion, actually. I'm not a fan of the sound of that indicator sounds really cheap but the rest of the driving experience is absolutely fine the steering is is pretty accurate actually it's very light very light but again you'd expect that really wouldn't you um, you can change the driving mode if you put the car into sport it does weight the steering weight um, gets a bit heavier the throttle gets a little bit sharper let's talk about that actually because there isn't a drive mode switch there's a, a lever here called curves in a very kind of Formula One style kinetic energy recovery system. It's your drive modes essentially and coupled with uh, slightly different feelings behind the, um, from the steering and the throttle is it changes the level of brake regeneration. So we're in comfort mode at the moment so you get level two of brake regeneration, there's three levels. Um, sport mode knocks that back to one and then eco mode that knocks it, to, well, it cranks it up to three. Um, and the brake regeneration is pretty strong, actually. It's not one pedal driving, but it's pretty strong. And of course, it's just good at just eking out your range. You can hear a whine from the electric motor, but that is pretty normal these days. Especially, you've got to remember the value of this car. Now, the car we're in is a top spec car, so it's around 33 and a half, 34 thousand pounds. I'll put the proper price. Uh, on the screen for you, but the MG5 starts at around £32,000, and I know I keep banging on about it, but this car does deliver extraordinary range, extraordinary practicality um, for that price. It's pretty quiet in here as well. I mean, there is a bit of wind whistle here. On the mo you can't hear it now, but on the motorway, you can hear the winds getting through the, sea the seals uh, here. Um, but I can see why plenty of taxi companies um, and ride-hailing businesses um, use the MG5 because there's a good amount of space in the back. There's a, there's a big boot for an electric car. It's quiet, it's comfortable, it's got all the tech that you need, and it's pretty cheap. It's the perfect facelift, really, because MG have improved the areas which were lacking. So the styling, I mean, there wasn't 
It wasn't a lot to go on in the first place, but they definitely give it a, a more modern, a fresher look on the outside. The interior is much nicer. I mean, the material quality is so much better than it was before. And yet they haven't wasted money on the things that didn't need changing. So 250 mile range, pretty good efficiency, decent driving dynamics, and importantly, they haven't messed around with the pricing too much. This is still an extremely good value for money electric car. And of course, it's still the only electric state car on sale, disregarding the Porsche Taycan Sport Turismo. This is the only electric car, electric state car that's on sale. So they've improved the areas that needed improving, and yet they haven't messed around with the things that didn't, and they've kept with the low prices. So the MG5 then remains an appealing electric car to go for. If you're looking for the most amount of practicality, the most amount of range for the least amount of money. Thank you for watching this video. If you'd like a lot more videos like this, then please do subscribe to my channel. But until the next video, thanks very much for watching and bye-bye.